On today's show, we'll meet a man with the soul of a 32 Ford, the wit of a double-A fuel altered, and the personal warmth of a Southern California summer night. Hot Rod Magazine senior editor, Ray Baskerville. And how about zero to 60 in a heartbeat for the 180 in seven seconds? It happens that fast at the NMRA, plus the mesmerizing power of scale replica pedal cars. As I said before, hot rodders speak their own language. And to get a full TELP translation, we're going to meet the hot rodder that speaks the language better than anybody I know. Hot Rod Magazine's very own Gray Baskerville. El Mirage Dry Lake in the dusty Mojave Desert has been the home of hot rodding since the 40s. And for as long as hot rodders have been racing here, Hot Rod Magazine has come to tell their story. Bob Peterson came up here in 1948 and uh, was photographing the event. Uh, we have photographs of him doing that, and that's where the whole Hot Rod Magazine started, right exactly where I'm standing right now. And it's been that way ever since. The man assigned to follow their progress is Gray Baskerville, senior editor of Hot Rod. At all the shrines of speed, Gray is there, camera in hand, to spread the gospel of Hot Rodding. It's a heritage, it's a tradition, it's something that Hot Rod Magazine has been a part of uh, since 1949. So they just hand me the mantle, and I'm going to hand somebody else the mantle who will take over from me five years from now, and that person in turn will hand me. It's just a continuum. Gray is a rapidly enthusiastic rodder himself, a speed freak who was there in the beginning of the sport and has accumulated the records to prove it. This is my 32, and this is when I, we were drag racing it, back in 1962, 61, when I was still uh, a youth. I raced a, 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 what we call a B altered, which is it, essentially the front half of a 27T touring car and the back half of a 28-29 Roadster pickup. And we sold the car eventually, and, but since then, uh, when, I, when the results of drag racing came back, I wanted to recreate this automobile, but I didn't have the wherewithal. Uh, so I just started collecting parts. And unbeknownst to me, all these guys here did the car for me and gave it to me as a surprise at the Nostalgia Drag theme on When he is not out at the race flats, Gray can be found in his office on the Sunset Strip in Hollywood, an office cluttered with memories of hot rod history. This is my life. This is why I surround myself with all this memorabilia because this is every time I sit down at the at the uh, typewriter or, or the keyboard here on the, on the, on the word processor, uh, I just look up here and that's where I get my uh, get my impetus. Hello, this is your old pal Baskerville. Hey, I was calling to see if you, uh, how you were coming along on that roadster. Has, is, it, is the nose all done looking bitchin'? It's Monday morning. Time to plan pre-production for future stories and to get ready for the next deadline. The big story planned for the next issue is the records broken at the Bonneville Speed Week. After attending the week-long event, Gray has returned with thousands of photos and mountains of stats. I will go back to the office. I will turn in my film. I will then take my notes and the printouts that I try to get from the timing tower on the different cars. I will get, then get proof sheets back and I will start to select the cars that I think represent what the meet was all about. If it's a, for example, this year we'll have a lot of modified roadsters because those are the cars that uh, seem to be predominant. We will then show some of the highlights of the, of the top speed cars because we are dealing with speed here. It's not elapsed time or anything else. It's, pure raw speed, so naturally we will have a photograph and perhaps a short interview with Al Teague. I'll make sure that that trailer is in the background there, oh, I see. because that's important because the uh, caption reads, I wonder what that drag race is thinking of Al shifting at five miles away. The trailer. That one right there. Readers of Hot Rod are knowledgeable about cars and have high expectations from the publication that has become their Bible. Making Gray's and the other editor's job more challenging is the very nature of hot rods. No two are alike. Each is custom built. Understanding construction and design innovations are essential prerequisites for the staff. 
every one of our staff members has a car or races a car or works on a car or owns a car that would be termed a hot rod and I think that's very very important most magazines don't their staff don't have a hands-on out of the wallet involvement that we do and that's why we've been successful over the years there are features to hot rodding that set it apart from other forms of racing it's an amateur sport with no financial rewards just if you do very well you get a hearty handshake and that's about it maybe they'll buy you a beer <laughs> It is also the only form of racing where it is speed and not elapsed times that are challenged. All that matters is how fast can you go. Carnival is the epitome of land speed racing, and land speed racing itself is so unusual. And it's much safer than other forms of racing. The biggest danger faced is once tried, you may be hooked for life. You will never lose your uh, interest in hot rodding. I mean, that's impossible. It's, a, it's the worst kind of dope there is. I mean, every day you're thinking about cars, and you become a real dull guy because of that. But that's the way it is. Rotting is Gray's life. It's made him a contented man and given him an upbeat, convivial outlook on life. Being able to get paid fairly well for doing something you do for free. Very few people have that, have that, uh, uh, have that opportunity to, to do this. You know, write about cars, take photographs of cars, be with car people. And know that this is what you do for a living. You're just having fun with other people's money. It's incredible.